of your problems with the whole Brexit thing is, of course, that by severing our links with the European Union, we'd get this issue in Ireland and we'd have to create a, a hard border and that's obviously deeply offensive to you, right? Mm. I don't want to see borders in Ireland. I don't want to see borders between Scotland and England. It's not me that is uh, bringing these things to the fore. That's, you know, why I've argued, obviously, I've argued for the UK to stay in the EU. But short of that, I've argued and will continue to argue for the UK to stay in the single market and the customs union. So I will always do everything I can to stop borders uh, being right, but you, erected. But then, and I, you I don't all, want uh, to see that. That, right, is a, are, that is a feature of somebody else's policies, I not of it. mine. I get it. And you may say it's somebody else's policy policy, somebody else's problem and so on. The reality of your policy, though, which is to have another referendum on independence, which you believe you can now win, and the polls, to be fair to you, moved to, like, 50% now, so they're better than they were when you lost before. If you were to get your successful independence, as you know, that would create huge, then, differences between the way English tax, for example, would run against Scottish tax and so on. And we would, therefore, need to have a hard border between Scotland and England. In fact, you would therefore be putting yourself into the very same position that you now ridicule Boris Johnson for over what is happening with Ireland. What's the difference? Well, firstly, I, I don't think that is inevitable. We don't yet know, obviously, we don't yet know three and a half years on what the final relationship between the UK and the EU is going to be. And I will continue to argue for that to be as close uh, as possible. Now, I'm not entirely in control of how that ends up. So I will argue for outcomes uh, that avoid the kind of scenario that you're talking about. But equally, I'm going to be frank and honest with people as we understand more about how that relationship uh, turns out. And, you know, for Scotland, the issue here is for all the challenges that we may face in the future as an independent country, is it better to be an independent country in charge of the decisions that shape that future or are we better to remain, as we are just now, powerless and at the mercy of decisions that are being taken elsewhere? Now, that's an issue that I think Scotland has to uh, look at and make a decision on. And it has to do that, as we did in 2014, in a fully informed way about Nicola all of Sturgeon, the implications and yeah. all of the circumstances. You... And frankly, in a very different way to how the Brexit mm. decision was decided in 2016. You argue that being part of the EU uh, for Scotland is much more beneficial and your argument is being part of that union mm. is economically better for Scotland but you don't apply that same argument to being part of the union well, of the United Kingdom and of course Scotland exports far more to the rest of the UK significantly more than it does export to the EU or the rest of the world your economic interest is being part of a union, but the union is the UK. <clears throat> Look, I, I don't think Scotland should have to choose, and I don't believe Scotland does have to choose, between exporting to the rest of the UK. Scotland being independent will not stop us exporting to the rest of the UK, nor will it stop the rest of the UK exporting to Scotland. But I don't think we should have to lose our ability to export across the single market, which is the biggest market in the whole of the world. And our exports to uh, the European single market are increasing. Now, your broader question about, you know, how can I support Scotland being in the European Union when I want us to be independent uh, within the, the UK context. You and I have discussed this before. I think we discuss it every time mm -hmm. I'm on this programme. The two things are very different. Every single member state of the European Union is an independent country. Uh, they come together to pool sovereignty, to uh, work together on the big issues that countries cannot individually tackle alone these days. But nobody seriously says to France or Germany, Spain or Portugal that because they're in the European Union, they're not independent okay, countries. Let me ask you this. Within the UK, uh, Scotland is, Scotland's voice is ignored. We're not okay. heard. We're being taken out of the thing, EU against our will. With Contrast respect that with to you, Ireland, First Minister, which has got lots of power within the EU. With respect to you, First Minister, I don't think anyone ever ignores your voice. You make it very <laughs> loud, very powerful. I think you're... I'm not talking uh, about me individually. I'm talking... No, well, but you well, represent... Piers, no, Piers, let, but Scotland voted to remain in the EU. I get it. And we're being ignored. We face being taken out of I the EU. I get it, EU, because unfortunately you are part of the United... That's being ignored. You're part of the United Kingdom, which voted actually to leave the EU. And as long as you're part of the... <laughs> that's why I want to be independent. Well, I know what you want, but actually that's not what the people yeah, of Scotland... I, I'm, I'm not denying that we're part of the UK you, just now. Look, you're in a unique position of wanting something your own people didn't vote for 
and you also want something the United Kingdom didn't vote for. Everything that you want is, is actually what the majority voted against. Do you accept that? The, In a democracy, it's called the, losing. The, the, the argument, it's what happened to your rugby team yesterday. They lost. <laughs> Suck it up. Absolutely. I, I lost the... I lost the referendum in 2014. Nobody's arguing with You've that. If I hadn't accepted that result, Scotland would be independent by now. Uh, but I do believe that in a democracy, you're entitled to change your mind. The last time I was on this programme, you put the same argument to me that, well, you're part of the UK, so just, I, I think the term you just used there was suck it up. <laughs> if that's the case that people are now making for the UK, that Scotland simply has to accept being outvoted and being dragged in directions we don't want to go, it's not the most positive case okay, to no, make here's, for here's Scotland what I would say. in the UK. Here's what I would let's say. be independent. Okay. Let's work closely I, I with other countries in here's the what UK, I would say to you. but let's have the ability to shape our own future. Here's what I would say to you. Given all the extraordinary furore and disagreement and chaos over the singular issue of how you avoid a hard border mm. on the island of Ireland when one part is part of the EU and one part isn't. How on earth, even if Scotland is successful in unilaterally joining the EU as an independent country, which is by no means guaranteed, but even if you were, if in that... Well, if it, well it's not guaranteed, as you know, but if in that circumstance... If you Look, were Piers, able... I, I well, spend, hang on, let me finish my question. I spent a lot of time... Let me finish my question. OK. My okay. question is this. If, right. you, if you were an independent part of the EU as Scotland, how would you avoid the exact same issue when your biggest trading partner is actually England? How are you going to avoid the fact that you need a hard border if you're part of the EU with its trading arrangements and England isn't? I don't get how you're going to do it any differently to the chaos that is well, currently reigning in Ireland. And, of course, we're currently being told by Boris Johnson and others that we will be able to avoid a hard border in Ireland. The point I'm making to you is that these issues are important. Of course they are. But we don't yet know how the UK is going to resolve its longer-term future with the European Union. When we do that, then we take those decisions in terms of how we make sure uh, that Scotland continues to trade with the rest of the UK in the same way that the rest of the UK will have big interests in continuing to trade with Scotland. Um, but, you know, at the end of the day, this is about whether it's Scotland that decides our future, that we take into account all of the implications of being independent, all of the challenges, all of the opportunities, and we decide our own future, or we have that future okay. decided for us by people like Boris Johnson. And I think the right. former is much more preferable to the latter. On a, on a potentially more important poll, where do you stand <laughs> on my future at Good Morning Britain? <laughs> uh, there's currently a, a campaign to have me ousted <laughs> from my job because I have dared to question the validity of the assertion that there are a hundred genders. Uh, do you think there are a hundred genders, Miss Sturgeon? And do you think I should be fired or uh, should look, I, I keep I, my I, job? I don't know. I, I don't know exactly what it is you're being accused of, so I won't get dragged too much into uh, that obvious controversy. I guess uh, I'm probably more on the substance of the issues without going into the detail of it and without, you know, sort of taking on the, the way in which you framed the question to me. I'm probably more in sympathy with those who are trying to get you sacked than I am with you <laughs> on the substance. But, you know, if you were sacked from Good Morning Britain, I would miss these early morning jousts, exactly. which I enjoy very much. <laughs> <laughs> you know what, Nicola Sturgeon? And that I... better not turn out to be Sturgeon backs Piers Morgan, because my afraid, credibility would then that be... That is exactly how we will be spinning that. Thank you very much indeed, First Minister. I knew you'd come round in my way of thinking eventually. Uh, good luck with your conference. We appreciate you joining us, as always. Always good to have a party leader prepared to come and face the music, and we do appreciate it. Thank you. <laughs>